passage route, the first longer ending in a while. Yeah. And we get a weird one off the bat. We're talking about uh, the uh, demons going into the pigs. You preached from Mark chapter 5, 1 through 20 on Sunday. As we used to ask, had you had more time, what would you have gone into? Yeah, um, I preached on the, the Gerasene demoniac, which is what it's sometimes called, what he is sometimes called. And uh, what I focused on in my sermon was kind of all the just different weird aspects of the story. Um, but the, the strangest one, to me, by far, just in terms of practical application and how it translates to today, is um, just the phenomenon of uh, demon possession mm -hmm. itself. And um, if I'd had more time in you the know, sermon... You know, that's worth pausing on for a second because... Um, and you mentioned the sermon, and, and, and I agree, but but I, I wonder if you got any comments about it. Just that um, the Christian Reformed Church and its pastors, which you know include you and I, um, are, are, I guess, continuationist in the sense that um, demon possession and, and some of those spiritual aspects that uh, maybe some other tradition, traditions would say, you know, that was during the time of Christ, we we don't honor any of those types of claims anymore. Um, we do. So I just what did you get any questions or, or pushback about uh, any of that kind of? I didn't. I didn't get pushback. But yeah, like I said, if I had more time, I probably would have dug into that a little more. And um, you know, some of this is obviously speculation. But you know, there are strains of the Reformed tradition. We'll stick close to home. There are strains of the Reformed tradition that are. Um, cessationist, not just with regard to uh, the more charismatic spiritual gifts, but also cessationist in claiming that, you know, demon possession doesn't, right. doesn't happen anymore. That so was a, yeah. that was a phenomenon of the, of the apostolic age. And, uh, you know, I would disagree with that. And, um, you know, one of the things that I've been thinking about in the aftermath of, of Sunday and the sermon in, um, I'd be curious to hear what you think about it. You know, the amount of counseling that that both you and I do in the church, um, sometimes in certain situations, um, I, you know, I, I just wonder how, um, I wonder how possible it is that, that there is demonic influence. I'm not going to say demonic possession. I feel like influence and possession are two different things. Agreed. Like possession is influence kind of that has gone so far down the road that, you know, a person almost loses identity sort of, you know yeah. what I mean? But, but demonic influence, you know, I think I mentioned it in the service, but particularly with regard to unforgiveness mm. where, you know, people just decide, even though it's cutting off their nose despite their face, that they're just going to be bitter and they're going to be angry about something, even though it makes their lives miserable. Yeah, yeah. And I look at uh, mm -hmm. I look at the demoniac um, coming out of the graveyard, and the description we have is he's somebody that that shrieks and and howls in his misery, and he actually he actually mutilates himself. He's he's self harming. Uh, because he's so miserable and, you know, you think about, I mean, that's, that's kind of a, a visual picture of what we're doing to ourselves when we, when we fail to forgive, when we give in to addictions, when we, um, you know, just choose self-destructive behavior for, for no, yeah. for no reason. It's yeah. just kind of anti-redemptive, some of our behavior. And so I, what do you, what do you think about that? Is the, is there a correlation there or is it, um, am I way off base? No. And I like that we kind of started by just acknowledging the, the spiritual realm and it's, mm -hmm. and it's real power because I don't want to hyper spiritualize it. Like the demoniac is somehow a story about like, your, your life has problems because of, of demons. I, I think sometimes we give the devil way too much power. Mm -hmm. You see that in popular books today sometimes. And I don't mean to throw the baby out with the bathwater because the, the devil is one of our adversaries. But 
I think it was R.C. Sproul that said something like, um, he was talking about the devil being um, not omnipresent, right? So the devil's in one place. And R.C. Sproul said, uh, I don't think I'm important enough that the devil needs to be with me. And also, I'm doing a pretty good job of sinning on my own. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that should be said. You know, we, we cause our own problems sure. because of our own sin. Um, but I also think you're right in the sense, like, I'm going to borrow something a little bit off topic from Pastor Josh Van Engen in our classes. He was preaching on giving, so not not the same topic. But I, I, I should have written down the quote. I've quoted him, and I've told him this a number of times. So he said, uh, he started by saying, you know, a sermon on giving. Um, the, the part of you that doesn't want to be generous is not Christ in you. Mm-hmm. And, then he, and then he kind of kept that theme and said, you know, the part of you that doesn't want to forgive is not Christ in you. The part of you that doesn't want to serve is not Christ in you. And, and, I, and I mean, he had kind of this beautiful list of things. And that was really powerful um, just to acknowledge that like this, this, the, the patterns of harm and hurt that we find ourselves in is it goes deeper than just ah shucks I keep making bad choices but there's actually like a spiritual condition and I'm opting into my old nature and so to the extent that that's influenced uh, by the demonic uh, sure I can acknowledge that reality but then also to say uh, I have a new nature that's influenced by Christ in fact it's in Christ mm-hmm. uh, that I need to be opting into, and that would include forgiveness and and health, sure. and, and you know physical. I mean, you know, we, the, the demoniac had some physical problems too, and mm-hmm. and so that's that's a piece of the equation. You know, I would just I would just say in response to that, I agree I agree with everything that you said. Um, you know, the devil made me do it is perhaps not helpful in um, Christian life and Christian sanctification. However. Um, you know, I don't want to just go completely non-spiritual either because the devil is always looking for a foothold. Sure. And demons are always looking for a foothold and they will use um, whatever means they have. And in the in the case of the demoniac in Mark chapter 5, you know, they were living in a, a time and, and culture where that would have, I mean, it, it was terrifying to people that this person was possessed. In our day and age, um, the devil, you know, the devil can convince people that uh, that he doesn't exist. You know, he's won half the battle and right. we're going to have some problems. And so um, I just think we need to be aware of it. But, you know, ultimately, too, um, the moral of the story was in the sermon, um, Jesus, this is not a fair fight. This is not an equal match, yeah. the devil versus God. You know, Jesus has authority. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, it's it's not like Jesus struggled to cast these demons out. The demons were completely um, under Jesus' um, authority, and they submitted. And I would also say, just in response to something that you said, sometimes I think that the, the devil will take the power we want to give him and run with it. And so... It is a main point of the story that, you know, this is not a fair fight. And in Christ, in Christ's name, we have the tools that we're never going to be in that situation. Right? Amen. You talked about it not being a fair fight. It reminded me of an illustration I've used a bunch with students is to say, you know, that sometimes we have this idea that Jesus and the devil are somehow like equal foes. Right. Uh, you know, maybe the Mormons have that idea that they're, they're brothers, you know, uh, but that that's not the biblical idea of Christ and Satan. So I've sometimes said it's like it's not like two equal foes in a boxing ring. It's like Mike Tyson versus a baby. <laughs> and then I asked students, I was like, do you guys know who Mike Tyson is? And they had no idea. Really? And so I said, well, you got to help me update <laughs> my update my analogy then. Sure. Who's a who's a fighter that you guys know? And they said Michael B. Jordan. Who's an actor? Who's an actor portraying who plays yes. Creed or whatever in that movie? <laughs> yeah. So now my new my new analogy is it's like Michael B. Jordan versus a baby. Okay, yeah. what are you gonna this do? Is helpful for somebody. <laughs>
Anything else that you wanted to add or clarify or questions you got from the sermon? Um, I got good comments from the sermon. Um, it's a it's a passage that sticks with you, and uh, you know sometimes I think that's by design, and um, you know obviously Mark and uh, and God inspiring Mark wants us to be mindful that the devil is a presence in this world, um, and that we have to uh, to be cautious, we have to be aware, but um, just to put the cherry on top like we just talked about it's not a fair fight and uh the devil is already defeated it's just a matter of you know are we going to are we going to live into that victory in our everyday life and so that's i think what's important to take away today